Hello and welcome to another episode of Through an Opaque Lens with me, Niall Murphy. And here I am recording my second video on the 4th of September. I thought, well, you know, a couple of days um, not making videos has actually done me the world of good. It's, uh, it's got my brain working, so I thought, well, why not just go for a little bit of a walk and see what inspiration comes to me. And none came to me for a while, and then lo and behold, bang, a couple of great ideas came to me. Just like I was talking about in the immediate previous video about how I can see the city shrinking as we go into the future. Another thing um, that I see as we go into the future. Now, um, this might be me being a little bit foolishly over optimistic, but hey, I don't know, man. I like sharing my optimism out there because I think if I can make my optimistic thoughts public, I can slightly increase the chances of them becoming more real. But something that I hope for as I go into the future, and that is uh, something, right, there's something quite negative which is likely to happen, but primary negative could lead to a secondary or tertiary positive. And that's what I'm focusing on, the secondary or tertiary positive of the primary negative. One thing that is negative that uh, is likely to happen is unemployment um, going up, right? Now, I don't know what the statistics would be like for um, other countries, but I do know um, that they are talking about the possibility of there being 4 million plus unemployed in the UK in the immediate future um, as a result of the lurgy and how badly it's affected and crashed the economy. Now, if this uh, was to happen, and I mean, it could be worse even than that. It could go up to could go up to five million, couldn't it? And that'd be uh, that'd be pretty um, grim, right? But one thing about mass unemployment that I see um, turning in to a good uh, to something good that could come of it eventually. For instance, right? If people are on the dole or or they're just unemployed or they've kind of got nothing and now they're, they're kind of at that point where they're in a nothing to lose what the hell state of mind that you get when you know you, you don't have a job there's also the thing is that if you don't have a job you're not answerable to an hr department right you, you kind of get more of a feeling that you can say what you like you can voice your opinions right and it doesn't matter what the repercussions are because a lot of people will get into that state where they think well fuck it that world didn't serve me i'm gonna say and think what i like and i'm gonna think what i like publicly right it just so turns out right that um the people who can get away with um saying and thinking what the hell they like in the age of woke um so far are the unemployed and the self-employed right those who are not answerable to corporate hr departments those who are less cancelable if you like um, and if we go into a future where there is going to be more and more unemployment and say unemployment in the UK was to reach like 5 million which should be kind of well over 10% of the workforce probably getting on for about 15% of uh, work um, age workforce whatever could even be higher than that I think percentage wise now if this happened in uh, Britain and then of course this happened all over the, the world including the rest of the Anglosphere like America Australia, New Zealand, now certainly in America, it would be something that could happen. Now, it could be argued, right, that um, the problem that we have with the SJWs, the Antifa lot, all of that, right, has come as a result of a whole generation of kids who have been spoiled rotten by their parents' generation, um, don't have the talent and don't have the drive, and to some degree didn't have the opportunities, right, um, that their parents had. And as a result, a kind of falling out of, uh, and falling down, if you like. But at the same time, if a lot of people who are, you know, um, from a more working class background end up on the dole or unemployed or no longer able to um, work for a certain company and no longer accountable to HR departments, no longer cancelable, there's going to be lots of people voicing their true opinions on the internet and generally speaking out everywhere you look which means that the um the latte swilling um islington elite if you like the the woke bubbles um that exist out there 
uh, are gonna become smaller and smaller and less relevant and less able to have that um, hegemonic control over the narrative that they have at the moment. Because if there's less people to fire, then there's more uncancelable people voicing their opinions and basically saying things that don't go with the woke narrative. Now, I don't know if this is just pie in the sky thinking for myself. I don't know if what I'm saying is actually going to turn out to be right or not. But um, I like to um, share my ideas like this when they come to me because I also end up thinking to myself that, um, yeah, the one thing um, that they do have um, control over is at, at the moment they can say they can say to a lot of people um, you know you're not allowed to have this opinion if you voice this opinion you'll be cancelled you'll lose your job you'll lose your livelihood well it just so turns out that something else is going to come along and make people lose their livelihood whether they'd like that to happen or not so if um, that threat um, is no longer there there are going to be more people with non-woke opinions voicing their disdain at the woke lot. And I can see the tide turning because, um, you know, there is a lot of people out there, as we know, there are a lot of people out there who've never bought into that narrative, um, who are doing, actually doing very well with themselves and they cover everywhere from the, um, you know, the, the left to the right. There are some people who even claim, you know, to be somewhat Marxists like, uh, like Brendan O'Neill and Spike claim to be um, more politically aligned to, to Marx, and yet they don't buy into woke and have never bought into the woke thing. And then, of course, you've got people as well as that who are, you know, much more on the right, like James Dellingpole and um, Douglas Murray, um, who, again, you know, have never... Uh, they've been self-employed, they found a good niche, they've done very well for themselves and they say, say what the hell they like, right? So you've got, you've got people who are, if you like, pundits and talking heads here. Now, of course, um, with America, I don't really feel like I can talk about America with great authority because, um, and anyway, from my perspective uh, as a Brit, America seems much more polarised than we are, right? We're quite centrist, even though the effect of woke is still kind of, um, let's say, permeating through to us and taking over. Again, there's gonna be more unemployment in America. There's gonna be a lot more unemployment in America, right? Um, I think America is much more kind of, whew, as you can see, um, falling to pieces. <laughs> and it's a shame really that Portland has become a battleground um, for protesters and stuff like that. And maybe the age of protesting dies down after a while, I don't know, maybe. Um, the authorities tighten up on that again. I don't know but one thing I do see happening is that when it comes to people having a voice If the economy means that a lot of people can no longer be employed by woke corporations Right and woke corporations do end up bearing the brunt of get woke go broke and in a post lurgy era of course um, I can imagine this becoming more of a reality because um, there's not going to be as much, uh, what to say, velocity of money keeping um, the economy afloat for that long. And I can see a lot of changes as a result happening. Um, the, people won't have the luxury, if you like, um, to be self-indulgent in that kind of way. And um, as time goes on, it will become much, much more obvious to everyone what a bunch of nihilistic and destructive cretins we're dealing with who are, um, who are who are basically espousing this narrative. So that's my um, tuppence worth of optimism to share with you today. And um, I hope uh, hope you agree. Right. Anyway, what's it going to do? I'm, uh, I'm going to go on. The weather looks like it's going to take a turn for the worst. I said that in the last video. Uh, I've done two of them back to back. Well, it stayed dry not long enough for me to do that. But it is forecast to rain. So back to the car and drive home. Be a good idea. Oh, look at that. Some trees are losing their leaves already up here on the wild moorlands. Down in the lowlands and down in the towns, not so much. But when you get out up onto the windy tops of everything, we're starting to see a lot of leaf loss. Oh, well. Anyway, see you later, alligator. See you soon, baboon.
If you like this content, don't forget to like, subscribe and share. Also, check out our new merchandise stores where you can find t-shirts, hoodies, mugs and more. Links in the show notes below, as well as the links to all our social media platforms, including Facebook, Twitter, etc. Please help this channel grow. Your help will be appreciated.